Hi, everybody. My name is Leah Gropo. I'm one of the dietitians and diabetes educators at Stanford Healthcare. Um, we're so happy to have you join us for our diabetes wellness group. Um, and we're definitely in for a treat tonight. We have a cooking demo from Jessica Shipley. She's one of our registered dietitians and certified diabetes care and education specialists. She's been with Stanford for over 10 years, working with the nutrition clinic and primary care. She works closely with our diabetes and prediabetes patients, teaching diabetes classes and weight management classes. She also provides individual medical nutrition therapy. Jessica will be sharing with you today three recipes that are summer cool carb controlled snacks that are her quick, family friendly and kid approved recipes. So we can't wait. Um, we'll also take questions if you have questions about the recipes or anything related to the food um, as we go. And then we'll also take questions at the end. Great, thanks Leah. And hi, good, good evening everyone. I'm so glad to be sharing Summer cool carb control snacks. I always think it's great to figure out, you know, when you're short on time, or you're looking for a quick pick me up during the during your work day. It's like, what's a quick snack that you can make that's tasty um, and that you can make quickly with some healthy ingredients all while still controlling your carbs. So the very first summer cool carb control snack I want to share with you is something called chia seed pudding, or I, what I'm going to make is going to be a chia, chia seed pudding parfaits. And I'm gonna tell you first my ingredients and I think everybody should actually have access to the recipes that I'm gonna be sharing with you. So you can either look at them as you follow along or take a look at them you know, later on. But what we need or what I'm gonna use for our chia seed pudding are chia seeds, a big ginormous bag. I always stock up on them at Costco because I need chia seeds in a lot of recipes. Uh, but chia seeds are great because one, they're really rich in fiber. They're, they're a great fiber source, a great protein source, and they're really versatile. You can add them to oatmeal. You can make puddings with them. You can add them if you're making baked goods, like some types of muffins or bread. So I love to use chia seeds. Oh, and then smoothies too. So we're gonna use chia seeds. I have some unsweetened vanilla almond milk. So I use the almond milk here. It's low, if you're watching your calories, it's kind of a low calorie milk alternative. Not much protein in here, but we're gonna be getting lots of good protein from our chia seeds. I have some vanilla, some cocoa powder, which is optional in this recipe. If you want something kind of chocolatey and kind of sweet, it works really well. And some cinnamon, and then I'll, I have some toppings I'm gonna to grab out in just a minute. So the first thing that we're gonna to do to make our chia seed pudding is we need to get our chia seeds. And we need about a, th the, a third cup of chia seeds. What I'm making here is a recipe that will make, um, it's, it's for two servings. So it's gonna be two. So I'm gonna do a third cup. And I like to keep my chia seeds in kind of like this little glass jar. It just makes it easier to get them and not spill them all over the place rather than having them in the bag. So I'm gonna put a third cup of chia seeds here in my bowl. And then we're gonna use these chia seeds later in another recipe. I like to kind of use same like ingredients in my snacks with different things. So you don't really get to have all this different stuff all over the place. All right, all in one bowl. We got the chia seeds. I'm gonna put one and a half cups of my unsweetened vanilla almond milk in here. And you can see here already, this mixture is really runny. And so chia seed pudding is gonna thicken up. Chia seeds, actually absorb about 12 times their weight in liquid. So that's how we can use this for a really nice filling uh, pudding option. All right, so then for my chocolate, I'm gonna do about a quarter cup. This is just unsweetened cocoa powder. It would be optional. So if you don't really wanna do the cocoa powder, you can leave that out. We're gonna do about a teaspoon of good vanilla. I always like to smell vanilla. Once I open it, it smells so good. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that here. If you have a teaspoon, you could go ahead and measure it, but just put a little couple drops in there. And then for some extra flavor, I'm gonna add some cinnamon. Just a couple shakes of cinnamon. If you have other seasoning spices that you like to use, you can use that. If you wanna do like a pumpkin pie spice or some nutmeg, that works well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mix that, this up here. You can see how I'm mixing it. I'm using a whisk to stir this. Chia seeds at first, when you add them to a pudding, they get a little bit clumpy. And so it's really important just to help make this turn into a smooth pudding is that you just stir it really well. So I kind of stir that. And then I'm gonna let it just sit usually for about five minutes. 
Once this sits for about five minutes, I'm gonna come back and then I'll stir it again. So now that that's done, what I'm gonna do is this needs to, for this needs to set usually for about one to two hours to give those chia seeds that time to help to absorb the liquid. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like once it sits for those couple hours. So here, fast forward a couple hours or overnight if you made this ahead of time. And you, here's what that's going to look like. It's a really thickened pudding consistency. So now what we're going to do, this is ready to have as your snacks. And you're like, oh, I'm hungry. I need a nice, cool snack, something kind of chocolatey, something carb controlled, great protein, lots of fiber. This is my go-to. It almost tastes like dessert. And it actually can be used as dessert because you can really add a lot of fun things to it. So the recipe that I provided for you, I call them chia seed pudding parfaits because we're gonna add some fun stuff to it. I have some berries, I just have some strawberries and blueberries. The recipe is calculated here for about a half a cup of fresh berries. So I'm gonna add, you know, this is a half a cup here, some of those berries in my chia seed pudding. I'm gonna top it here with half of this recipe because we made two servings in here. So it's a really good portion. So you actually can eat a lot for pretty low carb for what it is. And I'm gonna to top it with a little bit more berries. And you notice here that I actually have not added any sweetener to this chia seed pudding. You certainly can if you wanted to sweeten it yourself with whatever sweetener you enjoy, you can do that. But I like to use fruit to sweeten my, uh, my snacks, especially some of these really nice summer berries. If you chop them and let them sit, the juices just kind of develop and they really soak into the pudding and can taste really great. Kind of another fun option to help sweeten your puddings or your, your parfaits or to actually get, you can get frozen berries. That's another staple that I like to have for snacks is frozen berries from Costco, kind of that big bag. And you can put that in a bowl overnight and just let it defrost and then it get really juicy. And so those are some other great berries that you can use in your chia seed pudding parfaits. I just topped my parfait with some unsweetened shredded coconut and check this out. Super great snack, really rich in fiber, really rich in protein, carb controlled, nice, beautiful berries. Um, total with this recipe here, it's about 240 calories. It's 10 grams of net carbs and eight grams of protein and seven grams of fiber. So really great filling snack, um, lots of options that you can do to change it up if you wanna adjust your flavors. All right, so that's our chia seed pudding. I'm gonna get some of these things out of the way here and then we're gonna move on to our next. Summer cool, carb controlled snacks. So give me just a sec here to make some space. Also, Jessica, there's just a question about the recording. So the recording will be uploaded to the Health Library um, Stanford website. And I also provided the link. Um, so after this talk, you'll have this. And also with the recording will be Jessica's uh, recipes. So they'll be linked in there as well. I'm just moving some ingredients over here. I grabbed my blender because our next recipe, because I feel like summer cool carb controlled snacks in the summer is a smoothie. I love smoothies in the summertime. My kids love smoothies. Um, this is super family friendly, kid approved, and also another versatile to recipe. Oh, right. Jessica, you have one more question, actually. Yeah. Um, somebody was asking about your chia seed pudding recipe. Can you add oats to it, like an overnight oats recipe? You know what? Yes. So with the chia seeds, I'll tell you my overnight oats recipe. So chia seeds, what you can do, um, I usually will do like a quarter cup of oats if I'm making one serving, a quarter cup of oats and about three to four tablespoons of chia seeds. So you're actually going to have almost like equal parts of oats to chia seeds. And then that's really gonna bump that fiber, those healthy fats up in that oatmeal and the protein. So definitely always put chia seeds in your oatmeal. And it makes it really creamy. It tastes really good too. 
Great question. All right, so we got our next um, recipe we're gonna do, it's called the quick and nutty smoothie. Um, so what I have here, I have a banana, and I know sometimes bananas sound a little, oh man, I'm trying to watch my carbs, I can't do the bananas. But even as you're watching your carbs, you definitely can have bananas. It's really key about the portion of banana that we're having. So I have a half of a banana here um, in this recipe. And then we're gonna add things to it because as we're thinking about these healthy snacks, we wanna have our carbohydrate source paired with some protein and some fats. And so that's an, and some fiber. And that's what all of these recipes we're doing today, including our smoothie here. So what I have is half of a frozen banana. And I recommend frozen bananas and smoothies because if you're looking for like a really nice creamy texture or something cold, bananas, when you blend them up, almost get to like an ice cream consistency. So this tastes almost like a milkshake once you have it, but it, there's no ice cream in it. So we have half of a banana in here. I'm gonna use my chia seeds again. So here they are. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon of chia seeds. You can use more if you wanted to double this recipe or if you're making a larger amount for your family or other people. So I'll just put a nice kind of heaping scoop, about a tablespoon. You can measure it, but you know, if you're at home and you know, you don't have to be super strict on the measurements here. So I have one tablespoon of chia seeds and then I have some peanut butter. So peanut butter, you could use almond butter if you like. This is natural peanut butter. I'm gonna give it a quick stir. Um, I'm gonna do about a tablespoon of peanut butter in here. That's gonna help add a little bit more of that healthy fat, some good protein, some fiber, and of course, taste because peanut butter and banana go so well together. And then I have kind of another fun ingredient I wanted to share that I'm adding to my smoothie today. And this is just, it's called PB Fit. It's just dried peanut powder, but it gives the food or your smoothie that extra peanut buttery taste with a lot of good boost of protein. So this one, um, I'm gonna do two tablespoons and two tablespoons gives you nine grams of protein, but you're not getting all the extra calories. I know a lot of us, you know, as we're watching our carbs, we might be watching our calories too. Um, so maybe you don't want to bump up all those calories with using so much peanut butter. So the PB Fit is kind of a good adjunct or supplement as well. So I'm going to add that. And this doesn't have any sugar in it. It's just peanut powder. So I got that. And then I'm going to add about a cup of my unsweetened vanilla almond milk. Let me grab that. I usually just eyeball it because I'm, I'll measure it out here in the cup since I did get one out. And then we'll do about a cup here of that unsweetened vanilla almond milk. All right. And then the other thing optional, if you really want to have kind of like an icy cold smoothie, you can add a few ice cubes to that, to this as well. And that's going to make it additionally a little bit more creamy and tasty. All right, so that's all we have in here. Um, I'm actually going to give it a quick stir. So I put my chia seeds in. Sometimes you put chia seeds in your blender, they kind of stick to the bottom. So I like to just kind of stir it real quick before I blend it. All right. And you could use any blender. I just have the, I have a Nutribullet here. It's pretty quick and it comes with kind of like a small and then there's a bigger one. I like the small one. You can drink right out of this or you can pour it into a cup. All right, watch, there's gonna be a loud noise here. Here is my quick nutty smoothie. It's really good. Again, you could add other things to this too. If you wanted to make it, um, you know, different flavors or you wanted to bump up your fiber, you can put some ground flat seed in here. Um, you can put spinach in here. Spinach is one of those greens I like to put in smoothies. It doesn't have a whole lot of taste when you put it in smoothies and, you know, these flavors kind of make it taste even extra good. So here's our quick nutty smoothie. You could even add some of that unsweetened uh, cocoa powder that I used in our chia seed parfaits. So here's my smoothie. All together with this smoothie here, we 
have about 230 calories. We have six grams of net carbs here, 11 grams of protein. So again, this snack, this smoothie is really gonna keep you full. It's gonna keep you energized as you're using it you know, throughout the day. Um, and it's a summer cool snack that we can have. All right, so there's our smoothie. I'm gonna move this over here. That looks so good, Jessica. Oh my goodness. I don't wanna drink it right now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> and then you do have a um, question. Someone is wondering where you can buy PB Fit. Oh, you can buy it you, kind of most places. I actually just ordered this on Amazon. So I put it in oatmeal too. My kids really like it. Um, so I find it on Amazon. It's usually where I order lots of things. All right, I'm gonna uh, move my things out of the way and then I'm gonna show us our next recipe that we have. I like all the ways that you're highlighting how you can use chia seeds, Jessica. I think that that's so great. They're so versatile. I can see why you have such a big bag of them. You know, I, they're my Costco staple. Plus it's like when you're trying to think of all these ways to have good foods at home and also things that your kids like that are healthy and fun. Um, I like to do that too. So we'll usually do like a big, big batch of the chia seed pudding and I kind of let everyone put their own toppings. Of course, my kids like to put chocolate chips and chocolate syrup in it. Um, and that's okay. We do all this nice variety. Okay. Let me make sure I have all my ingredients here. So this one of what I'm making, I'll show you my ingredients here in just a moment. Okay, so our next recipe, we are gonna make an avocado hummus. And I have a food processor here, and I know not everyone maybe has a food processor. It's kind of like you don't want to have all these appliances, but you can do this actually in your Nutribullet or in the blender. Since my Nutribullet is dirty, I'm making this in the food processor. Um, but I've, ma I've made it in the Nutribullet before, it works just fine. Okay, so avocado hummus. We have um, chickpeas. So I have my, I actually had just used canned, no added salt chickpeas. So with diabetes, many of us are also watching our sodium intake. Um, if you're using canned products, I recommend try to get the low sodium or no added salt if you can find them. Certainly if you have dried chickpeas and then you cook them, you can use those too. So we're gonna do um, one can of the no added salt chickpeas right here into the food processor. And I really like chickpeas because one, they taste really good. Um, secondly, great source of protein, great source of fiber, and they do have some carbs in them. So they are a good energy source, but they have that mixed nutrient composition that really helps us to help better manage our blood sugar and give us some of that energy throughout the day. And chickpeas are versatile. We can make hummus with them. We could roast them in the oven. You can make lots of soups and various dishes with them too. So the, the chickpeas are always a staple that I have in my pantry. Um, so since we're making an avocado hummus, we have our avocado. And I'm going to put a whole avocado in here. Avocados, great, great source of monounsaturated fats, really tasty. Um, and it's going to make this hummus even extra creamy. So I just, I just have the avocado and I just scooped it right out of the spoon and just popped it into that food processor bowl. All right, the next thing we're gonna add in there is a half a cup of what our recipe calls for. Um, it says a half a cup of cilantro, fresh cilantro. I didn't have any cilantro, but I had this beautiful basil in my garden. I went and had my girls picked it earlier. And I was like, you know what? Let's just make a basil, an avocado hummus recipe with basil instead of parsley. And that's kind of the beauty of being able to cook and make things on your own. You, you kind of use what you have on hand. And then if you don't have any fresh herbs or seasonings, you don't have to use the fresh herbs or seasonings. You could use dried herbs or spices if you like, or you can just omit it if you don't want to include those either. All right, so I got my, uh, my fresh basil in here. Next, what makes a hummus taste really good is tahini. So here's our tahini. Tahini is actually just ground up sesame seeds. So we have a seed in here. Seeds are super rich in protein, fat, fiber. And tahini, when you buy it in the jar, it comes separated. It's a lot like that natural peanut butter. So you kind of have to just give it a little stir before you use it. And then 
um, then you can go ahead and add it to our recipe. So this recipe calls for about a quarter cup of tahini and I have my measuring cup here and I'm gonna just measure out all of the things that we need. Let me move this so you can see it. All right, so I'm gonna put a quarter cup of hummus into my measuring cup here. You can also kind of eyeball it if you don't want to measure it out, but um, just to help keep this hummus to the recipe and keep that nice consistency, it does, I'll measure it out. And then it calls for a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. So I'm gonna put my olive oil in just in the same one. So quarter cup of olive oil in here. Okay, so we have lots of good fats coming into this recipe. We don't need to kind of be wary of these fats. The, these fats that are coming from our plant-based horses are really healthy for us. And fats um, also help to keep us full longer. It gives the, the hummus a really great flavor, makes it taste really good, and uh, it's gonna be really satiating. And then the other thing we're gonna add in here is about a quarter cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice. And the lemon juice is gonna make this taste really good, but the lemon, is also gonna to help to keep this hummus tasting really bright. And it's gonna help it preserve that nice green color from our avocado and our basil. So I just, I have just a squeezer here. You could um, you know, use lemon juice that you just squeeze, but I'm just gonna squeeze it out here and omit the seeds. So what I have to get the quarter cup, these are really nice juicy lemons. So I just have two, so I'll do. One more. And I know with hummus, you, it's easy to just buy it from the store, but I promise you, once you make your homemade hummus, you might not want to go back to the store and buy hummus again, because when you make it homemade, there's something about it. It just tastes so much better. Um, and you could really make it to your own liking, your own taste. Okay, so I'm going to put those three things, the lemon juice, the olive oil, the tahini, all straight into my food processor. Get all that in here. Okay. And then we need to do one clove of garlic. So I have one clove of garlic. If you don't like the taste of raw garlic, you could use roasted garlic, or you could even just use garlic powder, or you could just keep it out at all. I love garlic, so in it goes. And then we can put some cumin in it. So about a teaspoon of cumin, I'll just shake a little bit of cumin in there. Gives that a good, good flavor. Okay, so that's all of our ingredients. We have our chickpeas, our avocado, fresh basil, tahini, olive oil, lemon juice, garlic, cumin. I have not added any salt to this yet. Um, you can salt it if you would like that salty, some of that salted flavor to it. But the other thing what I did not say when you add lemon to things or an acid, sometimes those acids like lemon or vinegar give food kind of that salty essence. And so you might find that when you don't have the salt, it still might taste really good. So you can always make it without the salt, taste it, and then salt it, you know, kind of to your preference after you prepare it. All right, so now I'm going to puree all of this together and I'm gonna show you what that's gonna look like. All right, looks pretty good. I'm gonna do a little bit more. The avocado did not get quite mashed up yet. Smells really good. Okay, this looks awesome. And I wish you can all smell this because it smells so good with that fresh basil and the lemon and the garlic. So you can see what that looks like. Really creamy, it's really nice. Um, so this is our avocado hummus. And then the way that we can have it, so I prepared, it's actually 10 servings in this. And with this hummus, you can do a couple things. You could just keep it in a big container in your fridge and kind of take a quarter cup out at a time for your snack and enjoy it that way. I'm gonna show you what I did. So I uh, 
have about a quarter cup of hummus. And then, you know, the way you can use this, we have our good protein, fat, and fiber here. And then we're just gonna pair it with some vegetables. We can dip some carrots, some cucumbers, some tomatoes, so really a very low carb dipper option. So we don't have to use the pita chips or the breads or crackers, you certainly can. But if you're trying to keep those carbs under control, it's a great, this hummus is a great adjunct to serve with vegetables. And so total here, what I have for this snack is going to be 150 calories for this hummus. And then we have seven grams of net carbs, three grams of fiber and four grams of protein. And it tastes really good. Great thing that we can prep ahead of time. And then the other thing I wanted to share with you about this hummus being kind of a summer cool carb controlled snack is, you know, a lot of times we're going to picnics or gatherings and, um, you know, you're like, well, what can I eat? Because sometimes there's just a lot of maybe options that might not feel as healthy where you might be going. So I like to be the one to volunteer, like, hey, I'll bring something that, you know, that you know is maybe carb controlled and healthy. And people will love a homemade hummus. You could always bring a nice homemade hummus and then bring lots of vegetables. So you know you have something really healthy and tasty that you know you can eat because you brought it. Um, so we have our hummus. I'm gonna put this aside. So all together we have, I'm gonna show you our three snacks that we have made in our time together. So we have our chia seed pudding parfaits without added sugar. We made a double recipe. So we have another one in the fridge to use later in the week. I have my smoothie. And then we have our hummus, which made, our, which made a total of 10 servings. So we have snacks to go for our week or even for a couple days. These things can all be made ahead of time. You could double, triple, quadruple the recipes and store it for when you're ready. Um, so I hope, you know, some of you might have learned something or maybe want to try something new or maybe you were inspired to explore some new ingredients that maybe you have not already tried. So thank you, everyone. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Yeah, you're getting um, a lot of great questions, too, and a lot of great comments, Jessica. So someone asked or said, adding flaxseed powder is also very good more nutrition. Someone said, I love fresh basil. Somebody wanted to know your suggestions for substitutions for avocado because she um, is allergic to avocado. Ooh, good question. I would just leave it out. I actually made this the same avocado hummus the other day with my girls and I didn't even have, actually I had my avocados that I just used today, but they were not ripe enough to use in my hummus. I didn't make it without it. So it actually tastes just as good without the avocado. Great. And then somebody wants to know how long your avocado hummus lasts. Um, this last, I leave it in the fridge for probably like four days, I leave it, um, and then usually it's gone by then, but I would say four days, eat it, and then make sure you just keep it covered in a container. I stock up on, I'll show you what I do with it. I love kind of the glass, like lid locks, so I kind of just stock up, and I keep all of my hummus and snacks just ready to go, so I could just open it up and have it, and this lasts for about four days. This is one that I made two days ago, and it still looks really good. Yum, and then somebody else is saying, so yummy, I can't wait to eat hummus today. So you've inspired someone for hummus for tonight. That's great. Hey, yeah, and it's all ingredients. Are, you know, a lot of these are all ingredients we can just kind of have around in our pantries. It doesn't really require anything really special or obscure or hard to find. That's why I like, that's kind of why I selected all these recipes for today. Great, and then someone's also just um, popped in and said those are some great snacks. And thank you, Jessica. Um, does anyone have any other questions for Jessica that we can answer? If not, just to let you all know, so the recording will be um, uploaded either this week or early next um, at the Health Library website and then um, at Stanford. And then also Jessica's recipes will be there too and she has the nutrition facts and everything. So um, super helpful. I don't see any other questions. So I think we can wrap up and just a huge thank you, Jessica. I mean, these recipes and snack ideas look super delicious. And also, I mean, you made them 
so quickly, even while you explained it. So I can't even imagine how quick it could go if we didn't have to explain. So can't wait to try them as well. Great. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me tonight. Thanks for watching everyone. And um, yeah, please, please, please keep in touch with us if any questions come up later too. And cheers. I'm going to enjoy my, my nutty, my quick nutty smoothie for my, my dinner tonight. Great. Bye. Bye everyone.